Today I'm going to be talking to you about my worst ever patient who happens to be sat right next to me. Uh, one of my biggest bugbears. My most yes, and he's got one. very pretty green eyes Thank more you. as well. Anyone else <laughs> We're really about talking about a month about, today. About whatever <laughs> and, and how hard it is for him to do my treatments. Well, you. <laughs> because for me it wasn't about trying to achieve a frozen look or a waxy head or anything like that at all. Yeah, I'm sat there with a mirror being like, no, no, a millimetre this way, no, no, a millimetre that way. Maybe, maybe I think we're just baby. babies. I think so, yeah. yeah I think um, and you know, in, in a world where I'm not going to name any names. Like people are really, really going overboard with. Hi, my name's Dr. Sanjay Tricker, and today I'm going to be talking to you about my worst ever patient, who happens to be sat right next to me over here. <sighs> Whatever. I mean, today we're going to be talking to you about the treatments that myself and Dr. Sanjay have had done over the years. Um, it's quite an uh, interesting video and it's one that's taken a bit of time for us to actually sit down and talk about because obviously everyone's a little bit weary about talking about what treatments they've had. But we thought it was really important because literally I'd say like 80% of my patients always ask me what it is that I've had done. And I think it's something that is quite comforting for patients because we like to think we look quite natural and that's the sort of ethos of our clinic. So we're gonna to talk to you about the treatments that we've had done today. I think it's good to practice what you preach. So at our clinic, we're focused primarily on natural look aesthetics. And the most common treatment plans that people are gonna be asking for is something like, oh, I feel like I look a bit tired or yep, I want to yep. be a little bit more refreshed. And you know, that's me too, that, that, that's her too. So I guess a lot of these treatments that we're gonna talk about are some of our more common treatments. But who are we gonna start with? Okay, let's start with me, right. um, get myself over and done with. Um, so for me, obviously over the years, like, we're always learning new treatments and you know, new stuff is always coming out and it's so tempting to want to try everything. But I think we've, again, like Sandra said, we've got to practice what we preach and we've got to be quite careful, quite strategic and quite you know, reserved in how much we, we, we do and how much we even need. Um, so for me, uh, one of my biggest bugbear since I was a kid was my nose. So I had like quite a big dip here and it would like hook downward slightly. And I, for me, it never bothered me so much that I wanted to get surgery done on it, but it was something that I felt quite insecure over. And when I learned how to do nose filler, I think it was one of the things that I was like, wow, this treatment is really for me and I'm really excited to do it. And um, so when I got that done, honestly, I felt so much more confident. I was so happy and um, I just felt that, you know, it wasn't something that even my mum noticed, actually, um, even though she would always um, poke fun at it. But anyway, it's not even something that my mum noticed or my family noticed. Only until I pointed it out, people would be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I see, I see. There was something different, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it, which is exactly how we want all of our patients' treatments to go as well. So when I had my nose done, I felt really confident, really um, happy, and it's something that was reversible if I absolutely hated it, but I didn't. I mean, I continue to get it done now. Um, and it was something that would last for about a year to a year and a half as well. So for me, it was like a no brainer after I got it done the first time. And the fact that it was so quick, pretty painless, um, and you know, it lasted for so long, I was like, this is just so ideal for me. Um, I think Sanjay wants to talk about uh, the kind of patient I am and, and how hard it is for him to do my treatments, but I'll let, I'll let him talk about that. No, I'm gonna save, I'm gonna save on that for a little bit. I'm excited, I'm gonna go to town for that on your Profilo treatment. Oh, but, fine. But oh, <laughs> well, you. Anyway, Profilo is a stingy treatment for sure. And like, yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. So I, I guess she's spoken about her biggest insecurity, I guess, because yeah. that's the one that really impacted you the most. In my case, it's probably gonna be my under eyes. I guess when I was growing up, I had what would be more so genetic related tear trough issues, which are deep under eyes and dark circles under my eyes that I had before the age of 25. So I've, I've always kind of had this type of thing. And I really hate it when people say to me things like, oh, you look tired or have you slept or how come you're so tired all the time? And particularly someone like my mum saying it would just annoy me a little bit more than, than anyone else. We're really for, talking about mum today. For, for <laughs> whatever reason. But my indicator for when I need to get my tear trough treated is when people say to me, oh, you look like you look tired because that's at the point that it's become noticeable to people. And when I got this treatment done, even though we've performed you know, thousands of these ourselves, 
Obviously, when you're receiving a treatment, it's different to delivering a treatment. So I had a lot of the same fears and anxieties almost that everyone else has. I thought, oh my God, it's going to be so painful. It's a bit scary. Even though I know it's not meant to be, and even though I know that it's not painful, it's very safe. And also, Sanjay, Sanjay doesn't like anything near his eyes. Like once he had like a sty, and he needed to put eye drops in, I was literally chasing him around the house trying to put the eye drops in because he was un—he's just unable to have anything near his eyes. So when he said to me, "Oh, Zora, I'd quite like you to do my under eye treatment," I was like, "Yeah, good one. Like, like we're going to do that." But he was actually very good. Yeah, well, I, I just stayed still. I focused on yes, my breathing. I, I listened to all the things I would be telling a patient to do. It was uncomfortably comfortable in that I knew something was going on, but it really wasn't that bad at all. And it's so quick. And then I thought, oh, that's it. But it's funny, every year this treatment comes around again. I'm like, oh God, here we go again. And I work myself up again. But then I receive the treatment yeah. and there's nothing. And then I think, well, that was great. <laughs> Thank God for that. So, so usually I combine that treatment with a mid-face structural restoration. And this is probably the treatment I talk about the most. It's one that I think most people who are 30 plus probably would need some type of mid-face restoration once a year. And that's because this is the main area towards here and here where people lose uh, bone volume over time and their fat pads thin over time. So a lot of the main indicators of aging for everyone who's going to be 30 plus originate from there. So I think that combination of an under eye treatment with mid face restoration for me makes me feel a lot more awake or like I look a lot more awake and a lot more refreshed so I think that's probably my most yes and he's got one. very pretty green eyes so it makes them stand out a bit more Thank as you. well <laughs> um, so another treatment that uh, Sanjay does for me is my profilo treatment so I absolutely love profilo and other skin booster treatments as well like TSL Redensity 1 so skin booster treatments are excellent for people who want just a little bit more hydration in their skin to reduce fine lines to stimulate lots of collagen in their skin, um, reduce pore size, uh, generally firm up the skin. It's not a filler, it's just, we've got separate videos on exactly what this is, uh, but essentially what it aims to do is just give your skin a nice glow, firmness, hydration. Um, so Profilo doesn't have any local anesthetic inside the syringe, so it can be quite a stingy treatment and you need five injections on each side. It's a very, very effective treatment and it's really, every time I have it done, I mean, I always get lots of comments on my skin and, um, but it is a stingy treatment and I'm quite a baby. So Sanjay doing my, and I'm, and I'm also very pernickety about exactly where you place the injections. Well, I feel like I feel like you wouldn't be a baby if you were seeing someone else. You just get yeah, on with it. Yeah, I think but, so. But you give me all this trouble <laughs> when I'm treating you <laughs> because, it, like she said, it is a bit of a stingy injection and it's it's quite precise. So with Profilo, it's only 10 injections in total. Only. Well, you know, for, for most people, it's quite a quick treatment and it's, uh, you know, you do your five injections on one side. Yeah, and five some of you patients don't even want numbing cream. I'm just... Honestly, you guys are, you know, different league. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> but, but in your case, Zoya wants to watch every injection. Yeah. She wants to see where it's going. She wants to, I, God knows why she wants to do it this way, but it's just, it's stressful. Yeah, I'm like sat it. there with a the mirror being like, no, no, a millimetre this way. No, no, a millimetre that way. I don't know. I don't know why I do this. Eventually, but... I just have to take the mirror away and be like, yeah. what are you doing? I do this all day long. Leave me alone. <laughs> Let me just get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's a really effective treatment for just overall skin um, boosting. Um, and then um, another treatment that I really like for myself that I I do is just a little bit of Botox around my eyes here. Um, it's done for a number of different reasons. So I, I smile a lot, so I do get a lot of sort of fine lines here. So it's preventative for me. Um, it also is quite nice at giving me a slight lift to the lateral sides of my brow. Um, and I just feel that it opens up my eyes a little bit. And then when I'm smiling, I don't get as many um, lines there. So that's another one of my favorite treatments. I've that's actually, not so stingy. No, I've actually tried Botox as well. I just, wanted, yeah. I just wanted to try it because we do it all day long. I wanted to see what it felt like to receive and I wanted to see how it impacted my expression. And I want to, I mean, I, I've, obviously wanted to keep expression because for me it wasn't about trying to achieve a frozen look or a waxy head or anything like that it was more about just softening expressions a little bit to yeah. again more preventatively help the aging process 
So with Botox, again, it's a really weird one because I thought, having done it on thousands of patients, this is basically painless because the needle we use is one of the smallest needles in the entire industry. It's tiny little injections. You barely feel a thing. I felt it. I, 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 I felt it too. I, I, thought, I thought it was low-key, a little bit stingy. Yeah, me but, too. So maybe, maybe I think just we're maybe, just maybe. babies. I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think we're but, just babies. Our patients are hard. Well, I mean, I mean in, t in terms of Botox, it wasn't that bad, but it wasn't nothing. But, but anyway, I got through it. I survived the ordeal. Okay, we're, we're, not, we're not the majority of the population, <laughs> I must say. Like, majority of our patients, I'd say 9-10% of people, like, barely feel any treatment to be honest with you i, I think, think, I think it just... was yeah it was my expectation of feeling nothing and then i was like yeah. oh my god this isn't nothing but yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. that was my mistake for literally not thinking about it properly but anyway but it's quick it's like 30 yeah. seconds yeah and after i had the treatment it was it was just really cool to observe the result because you look at yourself in the mirror every day for two weeks and yeah. it kind of kicks in slowly and you're seeing the improvement for what you're hoping to see slowly over time and it was it was just uh, it was really cool to see and it worked <laughs> as yeah. i imagined it would work and uh, yeah it was it was good good treatment so i guess like for, for us generally we we have to keep our treatments really quite natural looking um because that's a what we want and b that's the sort of ethos of our clinic too um and you know in, in a world where honestly you know if you look at I'm not going to name any names, but you just need to look around what's on the TV, what, what's going on. Like people are really, really going overboard with fillers almost to a point where people's perception and idea of natural is not no longer what, what is natural. It's, it's, it's shifted to, to, to a different state where it's, you know, so obvious that people have had stuff done. Um, so where are we trying to pull it back? You know, we just want to do things like tweakments, restorations. You know, we're not trying to drastically change anything. Um, you know, there's restorative treatments that we talk about and then there's enhancing treatments. So, for example, for me, I've had both. Um, I've had an enhancing treatment for my nose, which does slightly change, uh, you know, the way that my nose was, for sure. Um, but it's not so dramatic and so drastic that it's like, oh, my God, it looks unnatural. And that's the main focus. So, for example, like for us, when we're out and about, you know, with our families, with some of our friends, you always see people, you know, when you're talking or, you know, you catch, they catch you off guard or you catch them off guard and they're like kind of watching you a little bit and they're like, oh, wonder what she's had done. And I can see that sort of thing ticking in their brain and they're trying to work out what you've had. And then sometimes they might ask you as well. Uh, but majority of the time they don't. And, you know, I, I, I hope that's like a good testament to sort of our way of treating and our clinic and the way we are just because, you know, even our friends, family, et cetera, n never think that we, we've ever overdone it in any way. I feel like my friends would probably be quite surprised to find out that I've had a few treatments just because yeah. they, they, they wouldn't, they just, firstly, they probably wouldn't notice a lot of them being guys. And secondly, they, they I don't know, they just wouldn't think that I would have a treatment because they don't think in that way. But then having said that, uh, I'll tell you a story. I mean, I went to a, it was like a, it was like a big reunion type party recently. And there are lots of people there who I'd known for a really long time and lots of people knew, all knew each other. And this is since I've gone on to become a doctor and specialize in aesthetic medicine and go into restorative treatments. So there are a lot of people there that I hadn't seen for a long time. And naturally there's just a lot of dinner time chat interest in oh so what type of treatments do you do and do you make people look different and just looking around the room it was really strange because there were quite a few people in the room who were my patients but nobody knew this right because it's a it's a secretive thing it's a confidential it's a, it's a yeah it's a confidential relationship you've got I'm not going to be discussing this in front of other people they didn't want to discuss it with their friends anyway because when people get these type of restoration treatments or subtle treatments, often it's just for them. So it's not kind of a big palaver about, oh, look at me, this is how I was and now this is how I am. Often it's just something quite subtle that they would notice that isn't super obvious. So looking around the room, I had four or five people who were my patients who looked great and the treatment had gone well and they were very happy and that's nice. But there was one person in the room who wasn't my patient and she had had a type of treatment that is what people maybe worry about. So something where, the, I mean, in, in my opinion, it looked a little bit overfilled. The quality of filler use probably wasn't very good. And that's why there may have been some migration. So to people like my friends looking around, they would have looked to her and said, you know, she, she looks like she's been done or like she's had a treatment. So... A lot of my friends were kind of nudging me saying, oh, is this what you do? Is this the type of work that you do? Is, is this what you do all day long? 
And for me, I found it a little bit frustrating because I feel like there's a, a lack of a understanding of what natural look aesthetics really is. Because within this room of 100 people, I had four or five beautiful examples who looked really, really natural. You could never tell they'd done anything. I, I think, looked natural as well, and you probably couldn't tell that I had treatments done too. But because of this one lady who had been treated elsewhere in, in a different type of way to go for a different type of look, that almost labels the industry for what we do when we treat it's people so, and so they look done. Yeah, it's and it's so like, you know, that, that's just not at all how it is. No, not at all. And, it, and yeah, it is quite annoying and frustrating for us because, you know, people are like, oh, is that what you do? Is that what you do? And we're like, no, it's not what we do. <laughs> Um, um, but anyway, we just wanted to talk you through some of the treatments that we've had and our own experiences with them. Um, anything yeah. else you want to add? Well, I mean, we'll, we'll do some more videos on future treatments that we get done as well then. I'll tell you what I'm going to do next. My next treatment I'm going to do will be a temple restoration. Oh, and nice. You'll find out about that in the future, I think. But yeah. Nice. Cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you. That was good? Mm-hmm. Good, we only covered about half of what we've had, but <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. <laughs>